हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल क्लिनिकल बाई केमिस्ट्री बाई डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरियंट्स ऑफ द पी सी आर सो वी विल हैव ए सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स ऑन द वेरियंट्स ऑफ द पी सी आर सो एवरी डे वी विल टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरियंट्स सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द मल्टीप्लेक्स पी सी आर एज इट्स नेम सजेस्ट इट इज समथिंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द मल्टीपल थिंग्स सो लेटर ऑन वी विल सी एंड यू आर गोइंग टू सी इन दिस पिक्चर we are having different variants so many different pcr cycle will be done in the same tube single tubes and later on it will be uh, analyzed by the gel electrophoresis so something like this one we are going to do this one basically if you'll see the multiplex pcr multiplex plex pcr is a variants of pcr and it is a wide spread molecular biology techniques of for amplification of the multiple targets in the single pcr experiment you are going to run only one pcr experiment and where multiple different number of targets can be amplified in a in this process in a multiplex uh, uh, means assay more than one target sequence can be amplified by using the multiple different type of primer for every sequences like you are going to see here four different targets we are having and four different specific primer we are going to use here okay so this is you can call it this is an extension of the normal conventional pcr and this techniques has many different uses later on we will talk about their uses in research and other different purposes so this is the basic setup of our conventional pcr where we are going to we are going to start with the double stranded dna and three different phases three different stages we are having in the pcr in the first stage dna will be denatured at very high temperature that is roughly 94 to 95 degree centigrade so where hydrogen bond will be broken and two strands will be separated Uh, together means both will be separated then in the second stage we are going to reduce the temperature from 94 to 54 around degree centigrade where primer will bind with the as respective strands of the single stranded dna this process is called as annealing this is one of the important process where primer will bind because primer binding is compulsory for the polymerization step and then later stage last stage will be the elongation or extension you can call it where dna polymerase will binds uh, yeah dna polymerase is going to elongate the associated primers with the help of nucleotides and the at the favorable environment so temperature will be 72 and for this one we require normally the thermostable uh, polymerase so this is the same thing but little bit more complicated components will be there so you are going to see we are having a double stranded dna in the first stage we are going to uh, denature this dna so both the strands will be separated two separated uh, single stranded dna we have got it then in the second stage we are going to use dna primer dna polymerase this there we are having thermostable dna polymerase different types of thermostable dna polymerase we may have here we you are going to see in this picture is track polymerase you may have vent polymerase you may have pwo polymerase uwo pfu polymerase so different types of polymerase we are having which is thermostable means stable at very high temperature so with the help of different dna primer which will be for forward and the reverse primer dna polymerase many nucleotides and the specific environment with the help of buffer and the bivalent uh, cations so their annealing will be there primer will bind at the 3 prime and the 5 prime uh, end of the dna means uh, both places both 3 prime end of the dna and in the last stage elongation synthesis will be there where dna polymerase will elongate both primer by nucleotides and ultimately we are going to get two similar uh, simple similar type of dna which is exactly copy of the previous dna original dna from where we have started this is our conventional pcr so in the uh, multiplex pcr we are going to use the same process but many number of targets will be there so we will see that one also in the pictorial forms so the first is what is multiplex pcr the multiplex pcr this is a process of amplified dna in a sample using many primers many multiple primers means as many as uh, targets you want to amplify that many different types of primer you will use it so many primers can be used more than one pair of primer normally in the conventional pcr we are going to use only one pair of primers in multiplex we are going to use multiple primers and that's why this name multiplex pcr came and a therm temperature mediated dna polymerase means thermostable thermostable polymerase we require 
and the same instrument thermal cycler you can use it the first time this multiplex pcr the pcr if you know this pcr has been discovered in 1985 by carrie mullis and just after three years of this discovery of the pcr this multiplex pcr has been used uh, for a method of the detection detection of the dystrophin gene which is one of the largest protein we, we, we are going to have then after this 1998 it is means if you see the publication which where multiplex pcr has been used this has been increased tremendously it started in 1988 so at that time we had only one or two publications but if you'll see in around into 2014-15 we are having roughly every year more than 1400-1500 papers has been published which uses this multiplex pcr means its use has been tremendously increased in different fields of biological science or medical sciences so in 2008 this multiplex pcr was used for the analysis of micro satellite and single nucleotide polymorphic polymorphism then in these recent times for sars cov2 their detection their identifications we have also used this multiplex pcr and that was by cdc america the primer design for all the primers had to be optimized because we are going to use multiple primers and because multiple primers i have told you annealing is a one of the important steps where primer binds different primers will have different types of annealing temperature so that temperature is important so whatever multiple primer we are going to use here that every primer should have almost same range of annealing temperature and that is one of the important points we will see that one in the regulation process so multiplex pcr is the simultaneous detection of the multiple targets many different targets many different genes can be amplified whatever desired targets we are having that many tar primer we will use it and we will have multiple targets in a single reaction well single vessel single append of you can perform this test this uh, pcr by using different pair of primer for each target if you want to detect five targets so you have to use five pair of um, primers if you want to four pairs four pair of primers you need to use it this technique requires two or more proof that can be distinguished from each other and can detect simultaneously. Multiplex PCR is a molecular technique for the diagnosis of important food borne microorganism. Many different uses are there. Not only this food borne microorganism in life science research, clinical diagnostic, forensic science, uh, criminal investigations, uh, then we are having many, many number of uses we are going to have for this multiplex PCR. So if you are going to compare traditional versus the multiplex PCR in the traditional process normally we are going to have one pair of primer in each vessels because we want only one specific DNA to be amplified. So every one primer set will be used in the one vessel and there you will have only a specific DNA will be amplified and later on so one target here one target here so you will have four different vessels where four different targets of DNA will be amplified. Then we are having in the case of multiplex PCR, we are going to use many different sets of primers will be used in the same vessel. So all the four different kind of amplifications will be done in the same vessel. So then we are going to run the gel electrophoresis. So there we will have four different bands. You will get the separate bands for each target amplified targets. So this is the rough diagram for those things like if I want I have four targets, this is one target, this is second, third and fourth target. So we are going to have four different kind of primers. And uh, so four different target DNA, four different sets of primer, then nucleotides, DNA polymerase, reaction mixtures. And ultimately, this is the markers. Uh, and here we are going to have different R product. So how you are going to setting up the primer? What is the usage of this one? So in this case, we require different targets. So these different targets can be from the same gene. It can be from the different sources, different genes. So different targets will be there. And as many as different targets you are going to have, in the same way you are going to have different types of primers will be there. So as target varying, primer is also going to vary. So then we are having nucleotides. Uh, deoxyribonucleotides, thermostable DNA polymerase, buffer and divalent cation. So these are our requirements. So these things will be the common for each targets and this is going to vary for each targets. So this is roughly you are knowing how it is going to happen. Now if you will see the different types of primer, multiplex primer can be broadly divided into two broad categories. 
One is called a single template PCR reaction and second is called a multiple template PCR reaction. In the single template PCR reaction, where we are going to use single template, means only one DNA will be there. But in this case, we are going to use different sets of primers. So one primer can bind here, another primer can bind here. So multiple primers can be there, but target gene will be only one. Several pairs of forward and reverse primer can be used for amplifying a specific region of the specific genes, but the target will be from the single gene. So this is called a single template PCR reaction. Opposite, we are having multiple template PCR reaction where multiple template different DNA will be there. So from different sets and for every DNA, we are going to have a specific sets of primers. Primers will be separate, different in both the cases. But in this case, only one DNA we are going to use. In this case, only one source of DNA. In this case, we are having multiple DNA sources. In this case, when we are going to use multiple DNA and multiple primers, there we are having one drawback. What is the drawback? The presence of multiple primer may lead to cross hybridization with each other. So many primers we are having, many DNA we are having, so they may having cross hybridizations and that will be giving you mispairing with the other templates. That is the drawback in this case. There are certain criteria which makes this multiplex PCR more successful. So first and most important thing is annealing temperature because we are using many different primer sets. So at the time of primer designing, uh, melting temperature you can call it. So there annealing temperature need to be very specifically mentioned so that most of almost all the primers the annealing temperature should be the same. So primer with a similar uh, melting temperature, preferably between 55 to 60 degree are commonly going to be used. So primer design should ensure all primer pair have a very highly specific amplicon size uh, should not be differed too much because if one DNA will be large, other DNA will be small. So their different kind of problem will be there. So one target will be amplified very fastly, other target will be amplified very slowly and you will have there will be mismatch and some problem may occur. There are some specific points which need to be uh, taken consider during the primer design uh, for multiplex PCR. The first thing is primer length. Normally we are not going to use too large primer or we are not going to use too small primer. So on an average the primer length will should be 18 to 22 base pair uh, need to be used. Second one is melting temperature. So I have told you primer with the almost similar melting temperature or annealing temperature preferably between 55 to 60 degree are going to be used and thus if primer will have more GC content normally higher temp melting temperature will be there because more GC content means more hydrogen bonds and melting temperature will be higher uh, and at melting temperature variation of between 3 to 5 degree is acceptable for primer used in a pool you, because we are going to use multiple primers so it is not necessary that every primer will have same temperature but 3 to 5 degree variation can be accepted. Third one is specificity. It is important to consider the specificity of the design primer to a target sequence while preparing the multiplex assay. Otherwise, different other DNA will be different uh, targets will be amplified. And the last one is avoid primer dimer formation. So whenever we are going to use different primers, so you have to see the sequence of the primer so that it is not going to form a dimer or unexpected hybridization will be there. Now, what is the use of uh, multiplex PCR. This multiplex PCR is going to be used at many places, many different locations uh, working. Like it can be used for SNP genotyping, it can be used for pathogen or just now we have seen coronavirus detections or different other pathogens, food board disease detections. It can be used for genetic modified organism or genetic modified plants detections, It forensic studies, criminal detections, DNA fingerprinting, uh, food analysis, food board disease analysis, mutation and polymorphic SNP analysis, gene deletion analysis, template quantitations, uh, many different uses of the linkage analysis and RNA detection. So these are the different uses of multiplex PCR. Other than this one, what is the advantages of this uh, multiplex PCR? In this case, uh, there are number of uh, advantages are there, Something, some advantages I can tell you. First, it can use as a one of the important things. It can use as a internal control. Potential problems in a simple PCR includes the false negative due to reaction failure or the false positive due to the contaminations. So, in that is in the conventional PCR, false negative are often uh, revealed 
in multiplex assay because each amplicon provides in an internal control to other amplified fragments. Then uh, more information and more in the less samples because you are going to use only one pen drops, high throughput because fast uh, you can do it. It is cost effective because you are going to use uh, less number of nucleotides or almost more efficiently you are going to use nucleotides, enzymes and other consumables will be utilized. Time saving because you don't have to run multiple cycles, you only one tubes, you are going to run all the four PCR cycles. Less input material required, uh, less pipetting error will be there. It is going to have increased accuracy for data normalizations. And uh, the quality of the temp uh, template may be determined more efficiently for multiplex PCR than the sim simple PCR. And so if you are going to see efficiency, this is most more efficient than the conventional PCR. So roughly these are the information which uh, is related to the multiplex PCR. Next day we will come with the different other variants of the PCR. So this is all about. Uh, if you like the video, press the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel, you can subscribe it. If you are new to the my channel, you can subscribe it. You can uh, share with your friends. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.